All right, so President-elect Joe Biden is already making plans for his first days in office. Biden is going to sign a number of executive orders to reverse several of Trump's controversial policies on the environment, immigration, and the DACA program as well. That's actually the Dreamers program. Joining me now is Chuck Rocha, um, founder and president of Solidarity Strategies, and Cliff Albright, the co-founder of the Black Voters Matter Fund. Um, Chuck, I'm going to start with you on this one. Um, good to see you, by the way. What message do you think it sends from the Biden administration, or so it will be called after January 20th, uh, with signing these executive orders to reverse much of what Donald Trump did in the last four years? Well, thank you, Jasmine. I think it's a big thank you. I think it's a thank you to people of color, black people, brown people, Asian people who came out and voted in huge droves. The numbers just don't lie. Black Americans, brown Americans delivered this election. And I'm a numbers guy. I've been running campaigns for 30 years. And if you just look at the percentages and the turnout in Detroit, Milwaukee, Philadelphia, and Latinos in Las Vegas and Phoenix, what this does on day one from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, it says, thank you. I'm going to restore some dignity to this White House. I want to thank your community. You no longer have to live in fear in your community anymore. I'm going to be here to have your back. And let me start with something that I can do, where I don't have to wait on Congress to do it. Let me reverse some of these uh, executive actions, the Muslim ban, reinstoring the DACA program. These are easy things. These are American people. And this is something that he can do. And I think it's a great first step for him and Senator Harris. All right, Cliff, so so let's get into the policies that could feasibly say thank you to the black and brown communities. What needs to change in the black and brown communities to make life better for them? We do know that Joe Biden has been criticized for his views on criminal justice um, from back in the 90s. We know Kamala Harris has also been criticized for her work um, as a prosecutor, as the California attorney general as well. She has actually said in her defense that as a prosecutor, what she was most focused on was making sure communities were safe, especially in the state of California, and not just white communities. It was making sure that black communities were safe as well. That was her priority. How do you take um, what we have heard on the campaign trail from both Kamala Harris and Joe Biden when it comes to making black and brown communities more safe, uh, more educated, um, and apply it to policy moves that need to be made inside of a Biden administration? Yeah, thank you for asking. So I think the first thing we need to recognize is that there's a lot of ways to make our communities safe, some of which go far beyond the issues of criminal justice, right? Having uh, educated, as you mentioned, educated communities and strong schools and, and economic development, um, making sure that with coronavirus that we're dealing with the health issues and in particular the, the disproportionate impact on black communities, like all of that makes our communities safer. But more specifically in terms of law enforcement, there's some quick actions that they can take in regards to even, even the issue of consent decrees. During the Obama administration, they had consent decrees with some police forces that were found to be abusing uh, the black population. That was one of the first things that the, um, the outgoing one-term president uh, and his administration undid. That's something that Joe Biden and his administration can quickly go back to. Holding these police departments accountable will be one way of demonstrating to the black community that we hear you on these issues, that we hear the protests that were taking place all throughout the spring and summer. And that'll be one way of saying thank you to the voters that, as we've mentioned, largely have put him into office. Hey, Chuck, just quickly here, um, are you at all worried about the 70 million Americans that voted for Donald Trump and the possibility um, that they need to unite under this president and see uh, this um, next president, Joe Biden, as leader? I do. I worry about that a lot. But I also saw last night in the words that Joe Biden used, he was very humble. He talked about himself losing uh, an election. He talks about having lost. I think that the words of a president matter. That's why we've all had a lot of fear over the last four years. I think you're going to see the opposite of that. You're not going to see Joe Biden be vindictive or mean. You're, you're going to see him constantly reach out and say, I know you may not have voted for me, but we have one America here and I want to be your president. That's how it starts. I don't know if we end in the right place, but at least we know we have a president now starting in January the 20th who will reach out and say, you're welcome over here. Please, let's come together as Americans. All right, Chuck Rocha and Cliff Albright, thank you to you both. Very much appreciate you joining us. Um,